What is sonar? For humans, the main idea is sending out a signal of sound and then interpreting the echoes from the sound to judge the distance of objects around them. Humans, however, were not the original inventors of sonar. Many mammals ranging from shrews to bats to marine life have convergently mastered the art of echolocation, but they are way better at it than we are. Bailey, what did you just tell me, huh? Really focus. I feel stupid. Bailey. Sorry. Hello. Ah, uh, here. Uh, we're here. Ooh, guys. Ooh, guys. What? What? What is it? I'm getting something. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, I can see the quarantine. <laughs> this is amazing. A significant portion of these mammals have vision that is beyond impairing, but make up for it with their incredible hearing, which they use in a technique called echolocation. Through echolocation, a mammal will send out sound waves ranging from high to low frequencies. They listen to the echo of the sound waves to gauge the distance between them and their surroundings. Humans have adapted this technique to what we call sonar, which stands for sound navigation and ranging. Soon after our discovery of sonar, it was implemented in Navy and military navigation tactics. In recent years, many studies have begun to show adverse effects of this bioecholocation on marine life. There have been countless incidents of whale and dolphin beachings associated with sonar. These mass strandings ordinarily consist of beaked whales and sperm whales, but can range through a variety of odontocetes at any number greater than two at a time. Many of these mammals are stranded from sonar effects at open sea and then land onto beach shores. The continual emitting of sonar waves, especially mid-frequency sonar, can cause what is known as decompression sickness or barotrauma. Decompression sickness is still a highly disputed issue in cetacea. It is well known that diving, especially deep diving, can cause gas bubbles to build up in odontocete muscle and blood but there's inconclusive evidence in the science world which shows that these air bubbles are mediated by mid-range military sonar. If sonar is causing this gas emboli to build up in whales, especially sperm whales and beaked whales, this is probably what is leading to the gory gas bubble lesions found in many mass whale strandings. Marine mammals also have many sinuses in their skulls to assist with communication and buoyancy, where sound can bounce off or be absorbed. One theory that has arguably been disproven tested whether military-grade sonar was causing resonance in these sinuses, but the NOAA concluded that sonar frequencies did not cause significant resonance damage in whales. Sonar is also seen as a potential coagulopathy, a stimulus for excessive blood clotting. With DIC, excessive coagulation, the whale can run out of clotting factors, so when a whale actually needs to form a clot for a serious injury, they do not have the resources to do so and bleed out. This hypothesis does not have much data, but needs to be explored more, but it's potentially triggered by sonar. Though the specific mechanism of the effects of sonar on whales is still unclear, the noise pollution absolutely has adverse effects leading to mammalian beach stranding. Regulations on the use of human technology for testing in the ocean have been limited recently. First developing in 1972, the Marine Mammal Protection Act came about. However, the initial regulations were very vague and not decisive enough. The first regulations were based upon recognition of endangered marine mammals and how sound testing in the waters were negatively impacting their population. There were no restrictions to continual research and Navy use during this time for the majority of places such as the Atlantic Ocean. In 1994, the restrictions became much more serious in which permits and authorization license were becoming required for any continual scientific research. Each government-funded entities, like the Navy, required a permit for uses of sonar under any purpose. The severity of the effects of sonar remain unclear but there is an undeniable connection between human sonar and its negative impact on marine mammalia. Though regulations have become more strict over the past few years, they are not enough to compensate for the side effects of sonar. <laughs>